everybody. My name is Liam Murphy from a company called HPP Tolling. Um, my presentation today is commercial applications of HPP technology in the food industry. Um, just going to spend a few minutes giving a little bit of a, an introduction to our company, HPP Tolling. Uh, talk a little bit about the benefits and the applications of HPP technology and then give some commercial examples of food products that are currently on sale in the marketplace. So HPP Tolling, we began in October 2012 with the, the goal to become the first high pressure processing central facility in Ireland and we achieved that goal in November 2014 when we opened the commercial facility that we have today up in Dublin. We're regulated by the Department of Agriculture. Uh, we're authorized to carry out high pressure processing of foods of both animal and non-animal origin. And our registration number with the department is MH114. We're fully BRC approved to carry out high pressure processing and storage and distribution of products. And we're also approved to carry out uh, high pressure processing of organic products by the IOFGA. So what is a HPP tolling facility? Um, basically what we've done is we've set up a central facility for HPP technology. Uh, HPP technology is a, a very expensive technology. The machine that we have would cost about 2 million euro to buy, uh, plus all the setup in terms of the infrastructure, uh, power supply, etc., plus knowledge and know-how in terms of being able to run, run the machine and, manage, and manage, the, manage the technology. So we've sort of taken all of that away, so we basically allow food companies access to HPP technology on a pay-as-you-go basis. So there's no capital cost involved. They bring their products to us, we process them for them, and they take them, they take them back again. So we're, a, we're an independent pro, uh, processor. We're available to all food companies. Um, we have no exclusivity agreements. Uh, we're centrally located uh, beside Dublin Airport. And we would have a capacity in our facility to be able to manufacture about 380 tonne of product per week with two of the HPP machines uh, that we have and we're a centre of knowledge and learning in partnership with a, with a number of other organisations. HPP technology applications are relatively new, but Ireland has done quite a bit of research into HPP technology over, over many, many years, particularly over the last 10 to 15 years. So there would be pilot scale HPP facilities in UCC in Cork, also in Chagas in Dublin, and also in AFBI in, in Belfast. Uh, we're supported by Enterprise Ireland as part of their High Potential Startup Program and we also work closely with Hyperbaric who are the manufacturer of the HPP equipment that we have. That's our location, so we're just beside Dublin Airport, beside all the major road networks around the country. So what do we do? So basically what we do is we, we subject food products to very, very high pressures up to 87,000 PSI. So if you consider the tire pressure in your car is about 30 psi, we're going up to 87,000 psi. So it's a huge, it's a huge amount of pressure. If you were to look at on Earth, where would the equivalent type of pressure be? You'd have to go to the deepest part of the ocean, which is the Mariana Trench, and the pressure down there at the very bottom of the ocean is about 15,750 psi. So we'd have to go six times deeper than that to a, a mimic the same amount of pressure. So that's 60 kilometers deep if you could go that far down to the bottom of the ocean. Water will cut steel at 50,000 psi. So most people would think, well, if I put my fruit products in there, they're going to be completely squashed up and, 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 and destroyed under that, type of, under that type of pressure. But the reality is we can, take, we can take grapes, we can put them in a bottle, we can fill the bottle with water, seal it, put them through the HPP process at 87,000 PSI and your grapes come out totally intact, completely unchanged in, in, in any way. So it's a, a, the reason for that is that the pressure is applied equally and uniformly across all sides of the product. So I can take a grape and just take it between my two fingers and I can burst it, but if I put it in water and the pressure is applied equally across all sides of the product, 
the product will, will remain intact, it won't be damaged in any way. So what HPP does is it kills all of the harmful bacteria in the food. So listeria, salmonella, E. coli, uh, all the spoilage bacteria, yeast and mold are all destroyed using HPP with the pressure. But the beauty of it is that the, the nutritional components of the product, so all your nutrients remain intact and all your sensory characteristics remain intact. So your taste, your flavors are un unchanged. So you have effectively a fresh like product with much longer life, with enhanced food safety, with all of the, all of the nutrients in, in, intact. So we can vary the pressures and the times. So we can, as I say, our max that we go up to is 87,000 PSI. Uh, and we can vary, have different combinations of pressure and time depending on the type of products that we're trying to, 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 to process. So how the system works, food companies basically bring their products to us in bulk containers. We take the products, we place them into our HPP baskets. Uh, each of our baskets will take somewhere between 40 and 60 kilos of, of product. And each cycle through the HPP machine is four of, four of them baskets. So for each cycle we process, we can process somewhere between 160 and 240 kilos of product. So we take it as an average of 200 kilos per cycle. Product is loaded into the HPP machine. The vessel is filled with water and then the vessel is sealed. And then we start to build the pressure in the chamber. And how we do that basically is we pump more water into that chamber. So we literally force another 15% by volume of water into that, into that vessel. So everything in that vessel compresses by 15%. It takes about four to five minutes to build the pressure. We typically then would hold it for about three minutes and then the pressure is released. So your total cycle takes somewhere about nine minutes and you can do 200 kilos per, per cycle. So the capacity of the machine would be roughly one ton, uh, sorry, one, a ton and a half uh, per hour. So this is a picture of the actual machine itself. So it's a quite a large machine. It's about 15 meters in length. These are the baskets here that I talked about, so four of them per cycle. So 200 kilos of product goes into the HPP machine each cycle. It takes about nine minutes to, to do that. So what are the advantages of HPP? There's, there's a lot of them. The main one being uh, extended shelf life. So typically with, with perishable type products, we can extend the shelf life between three and 10 times. Typically uh, with things like juices, we can go up to 10 times the, the shelf life. But with other products, three to four times would be three to four times would be what the, how we would normally extend the shelf life by. Knock-on effects of that, particularly with short shelf life products, are you can obviously reduce returns. You have less returns coming back from the marketplace, and uh, that's the, uh, the obvious benefits of that. There's no temperature required, so it's a low temperature preservation method. So we don't, we, there's no heat involved, so there's no heat degradation of the product going through HPP. Very, very safe technology. Everything is done pretty much in its final pack. So particularly for ready to eat products, there's no further handling. So all any potential listeria or salmonella that might be in there are completely destroyed by the HPP process. So we have a very, very safe, very, very safe technology. Obviously in the current environment with, with Brexit, uh, it allows ex expansion potentially into export markets, so it can open up other markets in terms of the additional life, but also in terms of the food safety as well, particularly maybe further afield, the Middle East and Asia, where you know the temperature supply chain may not be 100%, and, and the HPP gives you that added safety hurdle for different types of products. The other benefit of HPP is we, we don't need preservatives. So we can, we can process products with pressure. We don't have to put preservatives in there. So it's a very, very clean label. There's a lot of demand at the minute by consumers for clean label, preservative-free products. So another big advantage is of HPP. Increased production efficiency. So if you have a short shelf life product, you're potentially making that product every day or, or, or a couple of times a day because of the short shelf life. It allows you to get benefits in the supply chain by being able to make longer, bigger batches uh, over not uh, over, over over a longer over a longer period of time. 
The other benefit of HPP is everything in the chamber gets the same treatment. So if it's a 100 gram piece of cheese or a 10 kilo block of meat, everything gets exactly the same treatment. It doesn't need a different treatment. So it's, it doesn't depend on size. Everything in there gets exactly the same treatment. As well, it's waste free and environmental friendly. Only thing we're using is, is water and electricity. So what types of products can be processed through HPP? Well, basically, there's a wide variety of products. Meat products, both raw and cooked. Avocado type products, so things like guacamole, hummus, salsas, ready to eat, chilled, ready meals. Again, products that are very fresh, have a very, very short shelf life, um, work very well through HPP. Seafood products, a whole range of juices and beverages, from uh, your, your vegetable juices, to things like coconut water, cold brew coffees, any, any drinks really are very suitable for HPP. Fruit products, dips, salsas, sandwich fillings, soups, all work very well through HPP. Wet sandwich and salad fillings. Dairy products, even milk, uh, cheese and yogurts work very well with, with the technology. And there's also some, uh, some applications with farm and cosmetic. So I just want to go through some examples of products that are currently out there on sale in the marketplace. Some of these are being sold in Ireland, some of these are being sold around the world. So this is an example of a, of a chilled ready meal. It's from a company in Texas called Perfect Fit Meals. It's basically a vacuum skin pack product. It has protein in there with veg and say rice or pasta. Typical shelf life on that would be five days. If that product goes through HPP, we can come out with a shelf life of 30 days on that product. This is another American product from Sandridge Food Corporation. It's again, it's a, a salad type product in a clear pouch and it shows off all the natural vibrant colors of the product uh, which are completely unaffected by the HPP process. Again, shelf life on that would be sort of five, six days and with HPP we can take it up to, up to 30 days. Milk, this is a, a product that was launched in Australia uh, last July. It's uh, aptly named as Made by Cow. And literally it's, it's, it's milk, raw milk that's taken from a cow, bottled, it goes through the HPP process. There's no further processing, there's no homogenization, there's no nothing. Uh, it's as close as you get to raw milk uh, in, in, any in, a, in any product. And that product would have a, a 22 day shelf life uh, with HPP. Uh, fresh cheese, again, works very well with HPP, short shelf life product. This one is done in Spain, about seven days would be what you'd normally get. Again, we can take that up to about 30 days shelf life on HPP. This is an Irish product, it's a Billy Bear cheese, it's basically a, a cheddar cheese. Uh, it's made in, in, up in Monaghan and it's ex exported all across Europe. Benefits of HPP are, this is a, a kid's product, so the HPP ensures there's no listeria in that product, and we also get extended shelf life, which allows export in, or allows the company to be exported further afield. This is another dairy uh, product. It's, it's basically, it's called Nosh Detox, available in the UK. It's basically uh, yogurt with uh, uh, fruit and seeds. And it's about a 70, shape, 70 day shelf life on that particular product. Baby food. Baby food is another big growth area in terms of HPP. Not so much here yet, but I think it's, it's common in time. Um, all the baby foods on the market are, pre are particularly um, shelf stable products, highly processed with a year shelf life. And HPP allows, it delivers a, a fresh like product, not the same shelf life, about 30 days, but a highly nutritious product. And something that uh, you know, certainly parents would, would have a big demand for in terms of feeding their kids. Sauces, again a good candidate for HPP, pasta sauce, 120 day shelf life, 100% uh, natural, no additives, no preservatives. Guacamole, again, if any ever made guacamole, it's very, very short shelf life, only lasts a couple of days, the product goes brown very, very quickly. With HPP we can get a, a 40 day shelf life on, on guacamole. Almost again, Typical shelf life would be about two weeks. We can get up to 12 weeks shelf life on a hummus product with HPP. Cooked meats, again, work very well through HPP. 
get up to sort of a 100 day shelf life with, with HPB. It's an example of a soup, uh, soup product. Again, it's soup in a bottle, it's a chilled soup. Again, probably your shelf life normally would be a couple of weeks. On this particular product, we're going up to 60 days. Just a couple of Irish products. This is a product made over in, in Ballymount by a company called The Little Pharma. It's basically wheatgrass juice and barley grass juice in little shot bottles. And typically with juices we get sort of six to eight weeks shelf life on, on our products. Typically you'd only get maybe three to four days, maybe five days at the most on a, on a, on a non-process type product. It's a coconut water. Coconut water is, uh, it's, uh, it's made of, obviously it's, it's produced in Sri Lanka um, and obviously it doesn't have the shelf life to ship it here fresh so it's actually frozen, shipped to Ireland, defrosted and then it goes through HPP we get about a 65 day shelf life then on it after that. The happy pair you may have come across, uh, these guys are promoting healthy eating uh, from their factory over there in Wicklow, very well known, they appear a lot on, on, on television and that, but they have a lovely range of HPP smoothies. Uh, that are on sale in Turkey and Super Value and in Central. Uh, Sprout food, uh, Juices, again a restaurant chain in Dublin have their own chain, our own, own uh, uh, category of, of uh, HPP juices as well. So that's just more juices. Fish products again work very well with, with HPPs. This is a, a product in France, it's a skin packed HPP uh, uh, fresh fillets. Normally shelf life five to seven days. Again, with, with HPP, we can get three weeks on these type of products. Rare burgers, uh, big demand from among consumers for rare burgers. The issue with burgers is potentially the, the pathogens that could be present in the product. So with HPP, what we do is we treat the burgers beforehand, make sure there's no pathogens present, then allows you then to cook the burger safely, cook it rare. So this is another project that we're currently working on. Again, these are chicken breast fillets uh, in ovenable ready packaging, four to six week shelf life. Uh, product is, is fresh chicken, ready for the oven uh, in ovenable packaging. So that's just a brief history then in terms of HPP. If we went back to the year 2000, these are HPP machines around the world. It was little, maybe 10 or 12 in total. So over the last sort of 15 years, it's grown exponentially, where we've seen there's now over 300 machines around the world. There would be half of them in, in, the, in the US, where they would be a number of years ahead in terms of HPP, about a quarter of them in Europe, and a quarter of them then around the rest of the world. That's it, thank you very much. It's the only one in Ireland, yes. Yes, at the moment, yeah.